Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video I am going to talk about the minimum stiffness of a spring to change the buckling mode from one to the other. It is very common in practical engineering that you would face a, a problem that the support is not infinity rigid. Instead, it might be with a certain rigidity and we are going to see at what rigidity the system would be completely a different performance. What does that mean? Assume that we have a, a single beam and it is supported from the bottom as a <clears throat> hinge and there is nothing on the top. If you put a load, so it is completely unstable. But if you have a tiny spring here, there might be some rigidity from the spring. Now, if the spring is very loose, still it can drop. But if you increase the stiffness of the spring, gradually it will survive and it will start to resist and the bending the stiffness of the element would work to resist with the sufficient value. We are going to see at what point the behavior of the element will change from one mode to the other one. Let's do so. Okay, first of all, let's uh, sketch the question. We have a beam which is supported with a fixed support at point A and at point B we are going to have one spring. And suppose that this element is with the stiffness, bending stiffness of EI, and it's subjected to a compressive load P at point B. Also, we can assume that the constant coefficient of the spring is C, the length of the element is L. After the formation of this element, we might have this type of deformation. Let's have the coordinates. To solve this example, we need to have the bending moment uh, of the element and then solve it for the solution according to the differential equation. For this, I will cut the element at point X, for example, at the distance of X. So after the formation, what kind of loads do we have? P will come to here and then suppose the deformation at the tip will be delta. So at point A, we will have the horizontal force, which is P. Because of the deformation, we will have a reaction at point C, at point B. Let's call it R and at point a, it will be in the opposite direction, the same value. And as far as we have the eccentricity from point B, we will have also for the with the reaction force R, we will have bending moment at A. So bending moment at A will be E times delta minus R times L. So when we cut from the distance of x, we will put these P e delta minus RL, the reaction force in vertical direction R, and also the horizontal reaction at point A. Also, we sketch the deformation. and distance from the horizontal line or undeformed shape is called Y. Internal bending moment will be in the direction that we know that the top of the element will be in tension and the bottom will be in compression. So we write M at point X in this direction. 
So mx will be minus p times y plus rx plus p delta minus rl. And if we look at the bending moment direction and also the direction of uh, y, so here is x, this is y, and this is bending moment. So bending moment curvature and y are in the same direction. As a result, m is written as ei, second derivative of y. So substituting on the equation of m, it will be ei, second derivative of y plus b py will be rx plus p delta minus rl. I divide the entire equation by ei. So it will be second derivative of y plus p over ei times y equals to r over ei x plus p over ei delta minus r over ei l. Now I assume that uh, e over ei is lambda power by 2. Then the equation will be second derivative of y plus lambda 2y equals to r over ei x plus lambda 2 delta minus r over ei l. The solution for this Differential equation can be written as a sinus lambda x plus b cosinus lambda x plus r over lambda 2 ei times x plus delta minus r over lambda 2 ei l. What kind of boundary conditions do we have at point a? Deformation is zero as well as the rotation, and at point B, deformation is delta. So I will write down the boundary conditions y at zero is zero, y prime at zero is zero, and y at L is delta. So to find out the slope of the beam. I can make the first derivative of the formation function. Y prime will be A lambda cosinus lambda x minus B lambda sinus lambda x plus R over lambda 2 EI. And the rest are constant, so it can be zero. Now I substitute uh, x as zero in the first equation. So zero will be B plus delta minus r over lambda 2 ei l equals to 0. In the second one, it will be a lambda 0 equals to uh, plus r over lambda 2 ei. And from the third one, it will be a sinus lambda l plus b cosinus lambda l plus r over lambda 2 ei l plus delta minus r over lambda 2 ei l equals to delta. Now, uh, coming back to the question, uh, at point B, we have the deformation of delta and the reaction at a spring is due to that delta. So these are a proportion of each other. R is the constant of the spring times the elongation or shortening of the uh, spring, which here is delta. So R is C times delta. Or I can write down delta is R divided by C. Now I can substitute this delta in these three equations. 
So the first equation will be B plus R over C minus R over lambda 2EIL equals to zero. The second one will be A lambda plus R over lambda 2EI equals to zero. And the third one will be A sinus lambda L plus B cosinus lambda L plus R over lambda 2 e i l so this delta in the left side of the equation will cross with the other one in the right minus r over lambda 2 e i l equals to zero and also these two will cross so we will have this equation and write it down zero times a plus 1 times b plus 1 over c minus l over lambda 2 ei times r equals to 0. Lambda times a plus 0 times b plus 1 over lambda 2 ei times r or 0. And the last one sinus lambda l times a plus cosinus lambda l times b plus zero times r equals to zero. We can see that we have uh, three equations with three unknowns a, b, and r, and it's equal to zero. So it will go through trivial uh, solution unless otherwise we have or we force the determinant of the unknown coefficients to be zero. So in this case, I will form the determinate form of the coefficients. So it will be 0, 1, 1 over C minus L over lambda 2 EI. Lambda 0, 1 over lambda 2 EI. And sinus lambda L, cosinus lambda L, and 0. So this has to be 0. By expanding the Determine it, we will see the equation. So it will be 0 and minus 1 times lambda times 0 minus sinus lambda L divided by lambda 2 EI plus 1 over C minus 1 over lambda 2 EI times lambda times cosinus lambda L minus 0 sinus lambda L. Zero, zero. So it will be sinus lambda L divided by lambda two EI plus lambda cosinus lambda L divided by C minus this is L minus lambda L cosinus lambda L divided by lambda 2 EI equals to 0 and here I can write down sinus lambda L minus lambda L cosinus lambda L divided by EI lambda 2 or lambda 2 EI equals to minus lambda cosinus lambda L divided by C. Now so it will be lambda L cosinus lambda L minus sinus lambda L will be EI over C lambda 3 cosinus lambda L. I divide both sides of the equation by cosinus lambda L. So it will be lambda l minus tangent lambda l equals to ei divided by c lambda power by 3 so we can see that we have lambda l lambda 2 is p over ei and it's with the dimension of kilonewton divided by kilonewton per square meter meter 4 so lambda 2 is 1 over 
meter square. So lambda is one over meter. And lambda L is dimensionless. So it is wise if we just multiply this by L3 and divide it by L3, then we have lambda L as a dimensionless uh, parameter. So it will be lambda L minus tangent lambda L equals to EI divided by CL3 times lambda L power by 3. From here, we can find out uh, the function of C, for example. So CL3 over EI will be lambda L power by 3 divided by lambda L minus tangent lambda L. So now let's discuss about the value of C. If C is 0, it means that we have nothing at the end. So it means that we have a cantilever under force P with the length of L and bending stiffness of EI. So we already know that the Euler critical load for this will be I2 EI over 4L power by 2. Now let's check our equation. So in this case, if we consider equation number 1 and C equals to 0, we have two options. Lambda L is 0, meaning that lambda is 0, and then there will not be any solution. So it means that there is no force coming to the structure. Or the denominator of the fraction will be infinity. So I can say that if lambda L minus tangent lambda L is plus minus infinity, it is also possible that C is zero. In this case, tangent lambda L should be infinity and then lambda L will be P over two. Or we can write down that lambda will be P over two L. Lambda two from here will be I two divided by four L two and then P divided by EI will be pi 2 divided by 4L2. As a result, E critical with this case will be pi 2 EI divided by 4L power by 2. So we can see that our equation works for the uh, case that we have nothing instead of the spring. Let's assume that C is infinity. So it means that we are dealing with a cantilever column which is supported by a hinge at the end with the length of L. So in this case, the effective length according to the Euler buckling table will be 0 0.7 of the length. As a result, P critical or P Euler will be pi 2 EI divided by 0 0.7 L power by 2. Or it will be pi 2 EI divided by 0 0.49 L power by 2. Let's uh, use equation number 1 to see if we get the same answer. From equation number 1, if C is infinity, it means that the denominator should be zero or lambda L should be infinity. So lambda L minus tangent lambda L equals to zero. Then we can solve this for lambda. Let's use MATCAT. So you can use the solver block. Let's say lambda L as a guess value is 2, 3, whatever. And then let's write the equation lambda L minus tangent lambda L 
equals to zero. And now do not forget to put guess values, otherwise it doesn't record what should be found. Find lambda L. 4.493 so lambda l will be 4.493 as a result lambda will be 4.493 divided by l or i can say that lambda 2 will be 4.493 power by 2 divided by l square and p Euler or p critical divided by ei is 4.493 over by 2 will be 20 187 pi over l square uh, the format of the buckling load is usually from with pi pi over by 2 so then ee will be pi 2 ei divided by pi 2 divided by 20 187 s square so pi 2 divided by this answer will be 0 0.49 which is the same as what we expected so 0 0.7 l over by 2 it means that if c is 0 we got the same answer with the Euler buckling load and if c is infinity we got the next buckling load or next buckling mode now we are looking for a value of c of which this equation uh, would valid now uh, we are looking for the point that the buckling mode is changed we know that from c equals to zero it means that there is no spring and when c approaches infinity it means that we have a rigid support so we can sketch both cases in the first case the rotation is clockwise at tip b In the second case, the rotation is counterclockwise. Now we are looking for the point that this first shape mode is changed to the second shape mode. In other words, we are looking for the point or for a value for C that we have the deformation at S spring, but from the clockwise rotation, it tends to change to counterclockwise. So we are looking for the point that The rotation at point B is zero. But we want to find out at what C the behavior will be changed. So this structure looks like a beam which at one end is rigid and at the other end is uh, free in translation but it is fixed in rotation so in this case l effective is the same as l according to euler table so p critical 
will be i2 ei over l power by 2 or p critical over ei which is lambda 2 is pi 2 over l2 as a result lambda l will be p. if i substitute this with the given equation for c cl3 over ei will be lambda l is now pi over by 3 divided by pi minus tangent pi of which tangent pi is 0 as a result it will be pi 2 so c critical or c at the deformation or the buckling mode will be changed from the free cantilever to supported cantilever will be pi 2 ei over l3 we can also have a look on the equation of c uh, in matcad how it looks like let's say cl3 over ei is the function so f x is x power by 3 divided by x minus tangent x and x is 0 0 1 till 4.5 so that the answer for lambda l is 4.49 x and fx limit from the left is 0 and from the right hundred. here is the c versus the lambda l power by 3 divided by lambda l minus tangent lambda l x represents here lambda l so this is lambda l and we can see that it's very close to 4.5 and fx is representing c l3 divided by ei and at point i2 over ei it should be lambda l should be p you can also cross check this from here vertical is uh, representing lambda l which lambda l is pi and then and the other one is going to be pi horizontal is lambda l so this is pi And this should be pi power by. So here we can see that at c equals to pi 2, uh, lambda l will approach to pi. We can go through the numbers and calculate this with the <coughs> numerical solution. To compare also, we can model it by by RFM, for example, to check how it looks like. Let's go with the circular hollow section 168.3 and millimeter. We used this earlier in our examples. If C is I2EI over L3, it means that uh, 
a critical load should be as same as one side rigid, the other side rigid with translation three. So let's assume that the length of the profile is five meters and modulus of elasticity 210 gigapascal with the moment of inertia of 15.64 10 power by 6 millimeter power by 4. So it means that C critical in this case should be pi to 210 gigapascal moment of inertia 15.6 10 power by 6 millimeter 4 divided by 5 meters power by 3. 259 per meter. It means that if I model one column, one end rigid and the other one is just free with a spring with the constant of 258.7, then the critical load should be the critical load of the Euler equation that we calculated. So P critical will be pi to EI over L power by two, which will be pi to 210 gigapascal, 15.610 power by six millimeter four divided by five meters, five power by two. So it will be 1,293 kilonewton. Let's go with the RFM and compare the results. It's a 2D model. And from the previous example, I think we have the section that we used. Yes, 168.3. The bottom is fixed. And okay, we have. Let's check its D model in X and Z. And we can put one load, let's say 500. And we support it with a spring in X direction. And 258.7. And we can solve it for the given load according to our calculation. If P is 500 kilonewton then load factor should be 1293 divided by 500, which is 2.58. So here we can see that we have the same value. So it means that if C is less than this 258, then uh, uh, it is a lose. A spring the spring is not working effectively if it is more than that than that value then it starts to work so 258 shows that we are correct they are the same what else it's 584 we calculated 586 so pretty close Yes, that is uh, the end of this example.
we went through the minimum uh, stiffness or minimum uh, coefficient of a spring of which the behavior of the, of the element can turn from one mode to the other mode. So it doesn't mean that uh, with this value it can be exactly the same as uh, rigid. So it means that the shape mode which will change from one shape to the other shape with the minimum stiffness. So if you solve it or if you further model it by uh, different values of C on M software like RFM, you will see that never it will be zero because it is always a, a deformation at point B. But, but you can see that the behavior will change. First it's uh, like a cosinus and then it is turning to be a more close to rigid one. So the, the tip rotation will change from clockwise to counterclockwise with this C critical value. That's all and I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.